I have been chewing on this idea for a while now about women, right? I watch a lot of, not a lot, but I watch some red pill creators and I listen to what their takes are on women like Hamza, Andrew Tate. I, I sometimes worry that they focus too much on what the man can do for the woman, how much she needs us, how much uh, she needs our financial and physical security, all this stuff, right? And they fail to recognize how much the woman makes their life better. To a certain extent, I agree with this idea that if you have a family, if you have a woman, you have children, that you should take care of them. That's your responsibility. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to make a lot of money or to say like, hey baby, I'm gonna take care of you so you don't have to work or something, right? That's awesome if you're able to do that. But I think it gets to the point where it almost becomes demeaning. And I remember specifically watching Hamza's video about loving a woman. There was one particular point where I was like, what? And it was when he said something like, you need to treat your woman almost as if she's your own child and you're looking after her needs like, hey, babe, make sure to brush your teeth or let me get you some water. Right. And I mean, like if you're if your woman is sick or if she's like un, unfit to do that herself, then I, I guess. But it's not as though your woman is like some fucking disabled dog, like the 17 year old family dog. And you have to like, you know, Peter Griffin, that one scene where he's like holding the dog above the water bowl, like, come on, just take a sip. You can do it. If I'm not holding here, you're going to pass out. You know, if you're with the right woman, she's going to be capable of taking care of herself to most extents, right? You would hope that you don't want some helpless partner. And so what I say is you need to treat your woman as the, like, recognize that she's intelligent, recognize that she has perfect, the perfect capable means to take care of herself, but also that your presence and your care makes her life better, right? It's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. And I mean, it's not simping, right? Some guys are going to say like, oh, you're just a simp because you're um, not being a total domineer of your woman. It's not simping to simultaneously recognize that, you know, you have worth, you're a capable, strong man that can make money and all this stuff, but also that there are many positive aspects to having a woman in your life and that you need her just as much as she needs you. I think the problem is that a lot of these guys, they let their ego get in the way. And they say that, like, I'm a king, right? I'm a king that looks after his women. I take care of my own. And, I mean, that's fine. Like, it, there's nothing wrong with taking care of your own. But it's almost to the point where they say, like, oh, well, I'm a king. And if I didn't have these women, if I didn't have this feminine energy in my life, that I would still be fine. I would still be out there crushing it. I would still be just as capable as I would be with her, right? And this is just cope. I mean, this is a ridiculous argument. And I mean, women do this too, right? Like there, there's plenty of women that say like, oh, I'm a bad bitch. I don't need no man, right? I'll be perfectly fine. I'll be single my whole life. And it's just stupid. This is like, I'm not a religious man, but if God made men and women, why would he have made them where they can be perfectly independent of each other? They don't need each other, right? That's stupid. You need to have masculine energy and feminine energy and to have too much of one is it's a bad thing these men i think they focus so much on the fact that the woman needs me she needs my guidance but they don't really ever admit like oh shit i actually need a woman too right i need to have her presence her warmth her love and without it i'm less of a man but oh that's weak right you can't say that you can't be a red pillar you can't be an alpha male if you say that right like look i i provide for my girlfriend right now she is a graduate student and so i pay like two-thirds of our rent because that's my job, right? I'm, I'm taking that burden upon myself, not because she wanted me to do that, but because I say, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make your life better because if she didn't have that, if she didn't have me taking care of her, then she would either have to have roommates and, you know, that can be a whole can of worms or living alone. And, you know, no one wants that. No one wants long distance. So, you know, I'm making her life better and that's a positive, but I also recognize that I need her just as much as she needs me. And an example of this is just the past weekend, she went home to see her family. And I mean, you know, it's just a few days, right? It's not a big deal. I'll see her soon. But even in just these few days, you know, because I live with her now, obviously, I, it's like there's an emptiness. There's like, my quality of life has gone down a few notches because, you know, I wake up in bed and she's not there. And I go into our bedroom, you know, expecting to see her at her desk. And I get to like, say hi, give her a hug. And she's not there. And it's like, oh, shit. Like, That'd be nice if she was here. And she she brings such warmth and, and positivity and makes me feel happy when she's around. And it's noticeable when she's not around. And this is not weak. This is not simping. This is just me saying, yeah, 
I need her and she needs me. It's a partnership. That's why we're in a relationship. And it's also like uh, my, my grandma's mentioned this idea of an H couple, right? Where you think of an H, like it's a perfectly symmetrical letter. And an H can break in half and be two equal halves. And she would always say that me and my girlfriend, it's like we're an H couple where we can split apart, go do our own thing, right? She can go home, see her family, and I'm not going to fall apart. I'm not going to, like a lot of men, if their woman leaves them, they don't know how to fucking cook, right? And they're like, oh, I'm just going to eat takeout for three days. Like, I can take care of myself. She can take care of herself. But when we come back together, we're that one harmonious H again, right? The perfect symmetrical couple, you know? And this is like the way I think that ideally it should be, right? You guys can be apart. You can be your own person. You have your own capabilities. But when you come together, you're better. Here's another point. I wrote down, I kind of alluded to it earlier, these four camps, right? Men and women fall into these either of these four camps. For men, you know, you've got your black pill attitude. All women are gold digging bitches that... Uh, you know, it's easier to be single, right? Because they're just going to make your life hell. I mean, there are some women that are terrible out there. I mean, that's not all wrong. And then there's like the red pill guys like Hamza or Andrew Tate. They're saying like women need to be guided. They need to be led to water because they need a man's wisdom. I don't know. I don't really agree with that. I think that's a little bit demeaning, but you know, there's that. And then there's women. They say like, oh, I'm a boss bitch, right? I kind of mentioned this earlier. Like I don't need no man. And that's ridiculous. Uh, like, you know. I think often about whenever I'm at home and there's something on the top shelf that my girlfriend can't reach. Like she literally couldn't reach that if I wasn't here. Like you need a man, like if you're moving, right? You need to lift some heavy ass furniture. You need men, you need, <laughs> we need each other, right? A bit of a tangent. And then the last one, all men are evil, right? Destroy the patriarchy. There's some women that have this fucking black pill attitude that all men are terrible. And that is so obviously stupid and, and delusional, but so, right, these are the four camps that I thought of. Is it too much to ask for a balance of respect where we kind of meet in the middle and say that, you know, I can be capable and strong, but my life is made better with the opposite sex? I mean, I don't want to blame people too hard on this because I do recognize that some people have really terrible history with the opposite sex. Like I've mentioned this before, I have a friend who's been ghosted a ton on Tinder and his uh, he's come to this conclusion that all women are bad or all women are just these uh, thoughts, right? <laughs> and like, I don't want to blame him 100% because like, would I have the perseverance and wisdom to recognize that in the wake of, I don't know, 10 rejections that there's still something out there for you? Like, I don't know. A, a man can only take so much beating down. But at the same time, it is quite delusional and it is quite the cope to say that because of my past, this is how all 4 billion men, 4 billion women are. You know, if you've had like a few bad relationships or a few bad experiences with the opposite sex and you say, well, this is just what all women are like. This is what all men are like. I, I think you need to re-examine what you're doing. And I mean, it's made worse by social media. It absolutely is. You know, I'll, you know, you, you can open up YouTube shorts or Instagram or whatever and see the man on the street, woman on the street interview. And, you know, they clearly have interviewed a hundred women and picked out the one unhinged bimbo that gave a stupid ass answer. And then all the men are like, oh, this is how all women are in the comments. And it's so, it, it's like corrosive to the very fabric of society because people are taking this very anecdotal experience and saying, let's extrapolate this and apply it to all society. This is how all women are. This is so, this is such a bad, damaging way to think. I mean, social media is just, it's not real life, okay? So stop letting it convince you that it actually is. I mean, like, like nobody who's in a happy relationship like me, for example, is going to walk around and say that, oh, all women are terrible or that, you know, it's better to be single. Like, it's of course not. It's, it's people that have never experienced that kind of love and that kind of relationship. These are the people that are saying that, oh, this is how all women are. And I mean, like, this is not a guide on how to get the right woman because, you know, there's so many different factors that go into it. I certainly got lucky to a certain extent, but to make your odds better, just try to find some equilibrium in this chaos, right? You know, be confident, be strong as a man, know that you're not going to fall apart and die if you don't have a woman, like you know how to make money or whatever, but know that women have worth too. And if you have the right woman, know that she is smart, empathetic, understanding, uh, maybe more emotionally intelligent than you, right? She brings things to the table. And I say the right woman because absolutely not every woman is like that. You know, I'm not going to say most women because you can't really put a data point on it, but a lot of women are 
you know, unreasonable. And a lot of men are unreasonable. You know, I'm not saying that this is one side or the other. I'm just coming at you from, from my perspective because I'm a man, right? But there are absolutely women out there that are worth dating, worth marrying. And, you know, I'm a living example of that, right? I've been dating my girlfriend for seven years. Literally had to ask her the other day, like, has it been six or seven years? Because it's been so long, I can't remember. Like, I can't remember not having her in my life. Can't imagine what that's like. I want to put forth the idea that there can be light at the end of the tunnel. It's not this, you know, black pill, you know, barren landscape of dating where all women are terrible or all men are terrible. That is not at all how the world is. It's just very easy to to let your vision get clouded by social media. And some people that that push this narrative that, you know, you need to forget the opposite sex, right? They're not um they're not going to do anything good for you, right? And this is this is foolish. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that all of the you know red pill creators like Hamza or Andrew Tater are saying this. I do think that to a certain extent they are acknowledging that women are helpful in their life. But I just want everyone to to reach a middle ground, right? You know, be strong, be capable, but also know that in the case of women, if you're a man and you need a woman, that the woman is very helpful in a relationship too. That's the whole point of being in a relationship and you can't cast out the opposite sex just because you saw some instagram reels that said xyz all right so just let me know what your thoughts are on that and i'll catch you later